So I'm guessing you want to make flashcards for your revision, but you don't know what type of flashcards to make. Paper flashcards or electronic flashcards. So flashcards that you can make from apps like Anki, Quizlet, or any other type of app that can help you to make flashcards. Well, lucky for you, in this video, I'm gonna be going through everything that you need to consider when choosing between the correct type of flashcards to make to make the most out of your revision. And yes, I have left the links to any websites or apps that I talk about in the description, so you can check them out after the end of this video. So let's get started. So let's start off by answering a widely asked question. Should you make flashcards and are they useful? Yes and yes, in my opinion, because flashcards are strategically designed to enhance and encourage active recall. And if you didn't know, active recall is a really important revision technique in which you actively recall information that you've memorized from a particular piece of topic. And practicing active recall is really good and important because it creates neural connections inside your brain, making flashcards a really important and effective method for your revision to help you get the top grades. So let's start off by talking about the good points for paper flashcards. Now, the first good point I'm making paper flashcards are that most of the time the flashcards are yours. This means that you can make as many flashcards as you want or as little flashcards as you want. For most students, it might be that you just want to make flashcards on the weaker topics for the chapter that you're studying because you don't want to spend a lot of time making every single topic and only the ones that you're struggling at so you can overcome them through active recall and you can spend extra time on exam questions instead. Another good point for paper flashcards are that they're customizable because most students like to make their own flashcards meaning that they can add as much color as they want to they can add diagrams and pictures and they can add any other type of effects that they want to the flashcards this can make the whole process of making those flashcards fun and they can add as much information as they want because it's their flashcards so they can decide on how much information they want in the flashcard another good point for making flashcards is that if you're like me and you don't want to spend a lot of time making flashcards and you want to get straight to your revision you can just buy pre-made flashcards from a local store or just online for example, I bought these flashcards for my GCSE computer science course and it was around five pounds and I think that's a really good deal considering they cover the whole course which takes around two to three years to complete and that is really effective as I said for students who don't want to spend a whole lot of time on making these flashcards. Now we've talked about the good points of paper flashcards and now I'm going to go to the bad points which might make you reconsider making paper flashcards. The first bad point for making paper flashcards is that they take a really long time. When I say that I mean a really long time because most students want to make their flashcards for the subjects informative, neat and customizable. That can be really overwhelming, that can take a lot of time and that might not give you enough time for other sources of revision such as exam questions. The second disadvantage of making paper flashcards flashcards are that they're, they're expensive. For example, if you want to make your own flashcards, then you've got to buy the paper for making those flashcards. And this can be really ineffective because you don't want to be paying so much just for the sake of your revision. And even if it's pre-made flashcards, you've got to buy these flashcards for multiple subjects if you want to. And that can also be very expensive. Now, the third disadvantage for paper flashcards are that in my opinion, I think they're overall very ineffective because let's say you've got hundreds of flashcards. Now, you don't want to be carrying hundreds of flashcards cards in your bag because you can lose track of them and basically that is really ineffective and you don't want to be doing that you want to just get straight to revision and that's why making paper flashcards is not effective. Now we've talked about the good and the bad for paper flashcards. Let's move on to electronic flashcards or online flashcards and let's see how good they are compared to paper flashcards. So now we've talked about these paper flashcards. We don't really need them. Let's talk about electronic flashcards. Let's talk about the good points. Now, just like paper flashcards, online flashcards are your flashcards. So this means you can focus on what types of flashcards you make. They're customizable as well to some extent. For example, you can change the color, you can add diagrams and you can change the font. Of course, you can't add any extra effects that you would be able to if you're using your own hand pen to make them. Online flashcards are always portable, much better in comparison to paper flashcards because they're all within your one device. Now, online flashcards also are able to be made pre-made. So if you don't want to spend too much time on making those flashcards, you can make them. And the good thing about these pre-made flashcards are that they're free. For example, for Anki, you can just download different sets of flashcards or for Quizlet, you can just search up sets of flashcards that other people have made and you can use them for free, which is a really good advantage for having and using electronic flashcards as your source of revision. Now, electronic flashcards are also have extra features which paper flashcards don't. 
For example, electronic flashcards are made from Anki allow for space repetition, which is basically spacing out your revision. The algorithm for Anki allows you to give feedback for the flashcard that you've used. So if you find the flashcard easy or good, then it will give it to you in a longer space of time. Then if you found it hard, it'll give it to you in shorter space of time. And there's other features. I'm not going to be able to talk about all of them, but an example could be that you're able to take up posters of information that you need to learn and you can take out certain informations and you can hide them. So then the flashcard can be interpreted to ask you to fill in the information and of course you can't do that for paper flashcards because on paper flashcards it's just plain information and overall electronic flashcards are free for most of the time now we talk about the good points let's move on to the bad points they're time consuming because even if you type these flashcards up it's going to only be marginally smaller amount of time and so that's why most people want to move on to the pre-made flashcards and moving on to the second advantage which adds on to the pre-made flashcards some pre-made flashcards might not meet your expectations for example if it might be a different exam board and some flashcards are made for every single topic that's the disadvantage of having online flashcards and another disadvantage is that the online flashcards can overall be really inefficient to some extent and these factors could include if you don't have internet connectivity it's going to be really bad if you're using quizlet as your source of revision for flashcards and if you want to use anki as an app then you can't download it for free on ios for example i have an iphone so i have to pay 25 pounds or $25 to use Anki which isn't really good because who wants to pay for an application for a flashcard that's a really important disadvantage that you must know if you have an iPhone and you want to use Anki flashcards. So I've talked about the disadvantages and advantages for paper flashcards and online flashcards. I hope it gives you enough information to choose for yourself. When it comes to my preferences, I would like to use online flashcards, except for some subjects. I'm in a mix, which is a bit weird. If you did find this video useful, then do leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below whether you use paper flashcards or online flashcards. I want to see what people prefer when it comes to using flashcards as a source of revision thank you so much for watching this video and i'll catch you in the next one peace